Hello, hello. I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into medical school and other professional programs. And welcome back to MCAT Bites, where we dissect complex topics into digestible morsels. In today's episode, we're shining a light on polarimetry and optical activity, concepts at the intersection of physics and chemistry that illuminate the properties of chiral compounds. Understanding these principles is crucial for both the MCAT and your future medical career. You can expect to see anywhere from two to three questions on the chem phys section of the MCAT when it comes to polyometry and optical activity. In fact, I've even seen a couple of questions on the bio-biochem sections dealing with optical activity because they get around it with RNS for your amino acids. So this is definitely something you want to pay attention to. Let's start with a quick primer on the light and optics physics you'll need to understand this. Light is an electromagnetic wave. And when we discuss optics, especially in the context of MCAT, we focus on its behavior as a wave. The wave nature of light is essential for understanding phenomena like optical activity, which overall is a medium yield. We call it an electromagnetic wave because it's made up of, well, a magnetic field shown here in blue and an electric field shown here in yellow. As you can see, they are operating on two distinct axes and it is propagating the wave in a third axis. So now that we've got light down, we can move on into chiral chirality and optical activity. Optical activity is the ability of chiral molecules to rotate plane polarized light. What does that mean? Well, when light is plane polarized, it's oscillating in a single plane. As this polarized light passes through a chiral molecule, it interacts in such a way that the plane of oscillation is slightly rotated. This rotation can either be to the right, termed dextrorotarity, denoted by a little plus sign, or it can be left rotated with a minus sign, also known as levoratory. And a really important fact to know for the MCAT is enantiomers, which are mirror-like images, which are mirror image isomers of chiral molecules, will rotate plane polarized light in an equal but opposite degree. So let's take a look at polarimetry. This is a technique used to actually measure optical activity. The tool that allows us to do it is a polarimeter. It lets us quantify how much of the plane of polarized light is actually being rotated by a substance. The specific rotation is dependent on several factors. The concentration of the sample, the temperature, the length of the sample tube, and the wavelength of the light used. By standardizing these conditions, we can compare the optical activity of different substances. The observed rotation, which we measure in degrees, tells us not just about the chirality of the molecules, but also the concentration of the chiral substance in the sample. Now, these are a lot of things to remember for the MCAT, and honestly, these four are relatively low yield. You could make a Anki set questions for these, and it might get you one point, but if it's stressing you out, feel free to skip this here at once. Kind of conceptualize why would it make sense that temperature will change it? Why would the tube length change it? Why would the light wavelength change things? And let's end today with an example problem to make sure that you're understanding what you need to to be successful on the MCAT. So let's start. If a substance rotates plane polarized light 25 degrees to the right, what can we infer about its n antimeric excess and optical purity. Take a few moments here and try and figure this out on your own. Dominance of the dextrosity and antimer, the plus, the right shift, right? And the degree of rotation can help calculate the enantermeric excess and purity. So we can say certainly it is a plus, it's an R enantiomer, and we would need to get some more data to figure out the exact purity but if we could compare this to another sample, and let's say that sample A only rotated at 15 degrees, where sample B rotated at the 25 degrees to the right, this would tell us that sample B is more pure than sample A. Polarimetry and optical activity offers a window into the molecular world that is incredibly important for the chem phys section of the MCAT, especially when it comes to chirality and, an and enantiomers, one of the highest yield topics from organic chemistry. Thank you so much for watching our video on polarimetry and optical activity, and I'll see you next time.